This video is part two in a two-part series aimed at teaching you how to use Microsoft Loop. Now, if you've not seen the first part in the series, I would recommend that you start by watching that video first. That video focuses on introducing what Microsoft Loop is, what it can be used for, and how to get started with it. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can work with some of the pre-configured content templates in Microsoft Loop. I'll also talk about how you can work with tasks in Loop, and I'll even demonstrate how you can declare content as a Loop component and share that content across other Microsoft 365 apps. And I'll end the video off by showing you how you can manage Loop workspace permissions. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now you can see here that I've added my next section. Now I'll type forward slash and I will draw your attention to the series of templates that have been included in Microsoft Loop. Now, if you hover your cursor over these templates, it will give you a short description of what they are. Now for demonstration purposes, I'll just quickly select this one here. And you can see that a Kanban board has been added to my canvas. And this board features three statuses, keep doing, stop doing, and start doing. Now, if I go ahead and switch to the table view, again, this is simply a table that has been pre-built to help kickstart your co-authoring experience. Now I'll go ahead and remove this. And if you want to actually delete an element from loop, you just want to click on the actual position bar here and you can see this option to delete and that will actually remove that component altogether. Now what I will demonstrate is how to use the templated Q and A element. So you can see here under the template section, there is a Q and A session. And this is just, again, a pre-configured content block that allows you to post questions and also track those answers. Now you can see here that the questions have a question mark appearing to the left and the answers have a plus sign. So I'll go ahead and enter my question. Now you can see here that I've entered my question and now if I want to post an answer, I can click on the answer button and it will allow me to enter in some text. Now I've gone ahead and entered an answer here and this is not like a SharePoint discussion board, for example, you can't select the most appropriate answer. You can actually have users enter multiple answers. So this again is just a pre-configured content block to help enable you to display the specific information that you would like to include in your loop pages. All right, next I'll demonstrate how you can work with tasks in loop. Now I've added my task section and I will press forward slash and I will search for task. And you can see here that there are two options. The first option is you can use a built-in task list template or you can even add a Microsoft planner board to a loop page. Now I'll demonstrate planner in a second, but to start I will select this task list template this is essentially a pre-configured table that can be used to help you track your tasks. Now, by default, this table includes a task column, an assigned to column, due date, and a bucket. Pretty standard column. Now, I've gone ahead and I've populated two task records in this table. Now, the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the bucket column. Now, if I click into this, this is a label type and by default, it only includes one value, which is to do. If you wanna add additional options, you can simply click add option and enter your value here. Now, the next thing that I want to draw your attention to is the assigned to field. So this is a person type field. And here you can select the user that you would like to assign the task to. Now I'll go ahead and assign these tasks to myself. And what is really cool about these task lists in the loop is that these actually sync into the other Microsoft 365 apps, such as planner and to do. Now you can see here this little drop down field. Now, because these tasks have been assigned to me, I have the option to either view them in Planner or to view them in Microsoft To Do. Now I'll go ahead and click Open in Planner. 
Now you can see here that it opened Microsoft Planner on the web and it brought me into a specific task board that was created to match the name of that loop workspace. Now I'll go ahead and I will update this task here to complete it and I'll flip back to Microsoft Loop. And you can see here that that task updated in real time. And again, that is one of the major benefits of working with Loop is that content updates in real time when changes are made across the various Microsoft 365 apps and services. Now, when you're working with this task template, just like we saw earlier in the tutorial, you can switch this to a board view if you want to have the Kanban board style appearance for your task lists. And with respect to tasks, you also have the ability to add Microsoft Planner boards to your loop pages. Now you can see here the Microsoft Planner app. I'll go ahead and select this. What this is going to do is display a list of planner boards I have access to. Now I'll go ahead and select this one as I would like to add it to my page. And next I'll click insert. And you can see here that this actually embeds the planner board right on the page. And here you can drill down into the cards and work with this content block just like you would if you were using Microsoft Planner on the web or if you were accessing Microsoft Planner in Teams. Now again, any changes that you make to these cards or these tasks will update in real time in those other places. Now, if you're looking for other ways to streamline your workflows and increase your productivity, there is another Microsoft 365 app that you have to know about. That app is SharePoint Lists. Now, SharePoint Lists allow you to collect and store data in an Excel-like interface. With Lists, you can create columns and fields, you can create data collection forms, you can create calculated columns, and you can even connect your list to Microsoft Power BI. Now, if you're looking for a solid introduction to SharePoint List, I recently launched SharePoint List Fundamentals On Demand course. That course contains 37 lessons, 90 minutes of video content, and three digital downloads. Now, if you are interested in learning more about that course, you can click the link in the description below. And for a limited time, you can take 20% off the cost of that course by using the promo code MSLOOP20, but you better hurry as that promo is limited to the first 50 people that sign up. Now let's get back to the video. All right, now the next thing that we'll look at is how to convert a piece of content in your loop page to a loop component. Now, let's say that I want to share just this key messaging content with other users. Well, what I can do is I can simply place my cursor on this collapsible heading block and I can click on this button here and you see the option that reads create loop component. Now I'll go ahead and click on this and you can see here that what has happened is this piece of content has been converted into its own loop component and now I can embed this content in other Microsoft 365 apps. Now, let's say that I want to share this key messaging with a user in Outlook. What I can do is click on copy component. You can see here that a share link has been generated. Now you can see here that I've opened up Outlook on the web. And now if I just press control V, you can see that I'm able to paste that content directly into the body of this email. You can see here that I can even edit this content. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and type another answer, such as the project is amazing, I can edit this component right here in this email. And what's really cool about this is that I've brought up my loop page side by side. And if I continue to type, you can see here that the content is actually being synced back over to my loop page in real time. So that is one of the major benefits of using Microsoft Loop is that you can declare content as loop components you can embed them in other Microsoft 365 apps such as Outlook and Teams, and your content will sync in real time.
All right, now in order to share content in Loop, what you want to do is click on the share button and you'll notice here that you have a few different options. First, you can choose to grant users access to the entire workspace. Now to do that, click on this option here. That's going to bring up this invitation menu and you simply want to search for the user who you would like to grant access to the workspace. Now I'll go ahead and select my colleague here and you can then click on the invite button and that will give the user edit permission to this workspace, meaning they'll be able to add content, edit content, add pages, delete pages, etc. Now you can also choose to generate a link to this workspace. Now what this can be used for is if you want to embed the workspace in other apps and if you want to let users access the workspace itself. Now at any point in time, if you want to revoke a user's access to a workspace, you can do that from this menu and you simply want to hover your cursor over the user and click on the X and this will give you the option to remove them from the workspace. Next, you can also choose to grant a user access to a single page. Now to do that, you wanna click on page link from the share menu option, and this will allow you to generate a link to the page, and if you click on the settings button, here you can choose whether you want to grant anybody in your organization who has the link with access, or if you want to grant particular users, you can select this option and then just search for them as well. Now, if you wanted to modify permissions, you could click on this dropdown and you can set this link to read only, meaning that users who will be given access will only be able to view the content. Once you're ready to share, you wanna go ahead and click apply and that will grant the user access and it will also copy the link to the page. And the last share option is that you can declare your entire page as a loop component like we saw earlier in the tutorial by selecting this option. Once you click on this option, it's going to bring up the same share menu where you can choose to grant anyone in your organization with the link or specific individuals with the permission of your choice. So that's a wrap on my two-part series about how to use Microsoft Loop. I hope you found the series helpful. If you did, please give this video a like, drop a comment below, and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest content that I publish. I'm Louis Akabalas. I'll see you in the next video.